Uh, it seems like just a few days ago I was doing the video on this screen here, the new Cloud Game Store, which it's called that, or at least I'm calling it that, because that's the name of the vendor that sells it on AliExpress. Take note. Um, anyway, I feel like I just did this. Uh, they had sent Retro Game Repair Shop a sample of their new kit, who then proceeded to send it to me to check it out. Um, and then, basically, a few days later, the uh, actual kit came out and uh, started shipping. And got that right here. So there are two versions of the kit now. Um, basically, as soon as I went to start making the video for this, the second version of the kit was announced. And uh, is currently only stocked on the AliExpress store, but... I think that'll change eventually, um, you know, once once we give stock some time to move around. But it is the exact same kit, just with a screen lens laminated onto the LCD. But for the non-laminated version, this is what you get. You get the uh, adapter PCB, the ribbon cable to attach it, and then the LCD itself. Uh, it does not come with a lens. You are to supply that yourself, which if you are building a console, chances are pretty good you've already got a lens you can pull. So that's what we'll be doing here. Um, you will also need a little bit of adhesive to stick this down to the screen because the adhesive tends to stick to the screen side itself. Or you can use an aftermarket lens. Uh, those do come with adhesive already on them. A little bit easier, but I don't like them generally because the lettering on the logo is kind of crummy. But it does work. Um, we also apparently do need to trim the shell on the new version. I don't know what exactly changed between the sample I have and this version, but we'll check it out. So let me go ahead and get started by tearing this thing down. Should be pretty quick, but I will have to desolder the, um, the uh, whatchamacallit, the ribbon cable. I did have it soldered up. And yeah, there is usually a screw holding on the battery cover, but I keep forgetting to install the square nut whenever I close this thing up. And I just straight up don't even have an extra to install in this one. So I'm not going to, I'm not gonna bother. It is what it is. I'll just use tape to hold on the battery compartment for now. And yeah, this one does have a USB Type-C mod in it. So in case you're wondering what this little black piece is, that's just the bezel for the port. Oh my god. Oh, I thought my soldering iron was glued into the holder. I finally glued that stupid piece down. Alright. For the sake of not losing the buttons and getting them everywhere, I'm going to put the motherboard back in with one screw.
All right. And here is the sample that they sent over. You might notice that the board itself is quite a bit different. Smaller, different markings. The new one is marked in the top right here, GTH, and I can't even read that, V5.4. There we go. Where's the one that they sent me, GTL is V3. GTL V3. I don't really know what's up with that. Oh, that could be why my touch sensor wasn't working. Oh well, too late. Um, but otherwise the uh, ribbon cable appears to be the same. I thought they were getting rid of the touch sensor, but apparently they did not. Exact same thing. And then the LCD itself should be the same thing. Let me pull that off. Yeah, same markings, different date code. This LCD is made about two months later. And then the markings on the ribbon are same thing, same date code even. But there you go. There's the original. I'm going to set all this aside. And we're going to try out the new one. And this is the exact reason why I didn't bother doing any of the um, like power consumption tests on the first version, because I knew they were changing the hardware. I just didn't know how they were changing it. So I didn't want to gather data that would end up being largely irrelevant. The screen cable plugs in with the contacts down. Maybe. There it goes. Set this aside. And before plugging this in to test it, we're gonna try it on the uh, original screen. I'm just gonna set this stuff aside. And ooh, before I even plug that in, let us set that from 12 volts to 3.7. Because that would be very bad. Top one is the black connector, bottom one is the red connector. Pokemon Emerald. And the stock screen. Ah, that is, that is a problem for testing. This screen is uh, a little bit fucked up. Oh, now it's working. I don't know how well it's coming out on video, but the uh, colors are very wrong. They're not getting any better. Every time I touch the ribbon cable, it kind of flickers. That's not that's not glare on the screen. That's just the colors. The front light is on though. We can see in the overworld, it's pulling uh, 49 milliamps to 57 milliamps at 3.7 volts. 
So really not a lot. Um, I'm feeling really good that this screen is messed up because this is one that I was going to use for parts. So now that I know it's broken, I don't even feel bad about it. All right. Let us try the new one. Always good to bench test your screen kits for installing. All right, and in the exact same place, I see low of 92 milliamp, high of 109 milliamps. So quite a bit more, not too terrible, but quite a bit more nonetheless. It does have a touch sensor here that we can use to lower the brightness. It looks like it starts on the high brightness. I believe that is the low. We will test more momentarily. Um, 67 milliamps to about 82 milliamps and now I want to give it a power cycle and see if it retains that setting. I don't think it does. Nope, it does not. And so we have the one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, just six levels of brightness. Two, three, four, five, six. And yeah. Okay, that is the level I was looking at. Uh, there is. I'm fairly certain there is a brightness mod that we can do for this to increase the brightness, same way we do on the Game Boy Advance, but I will have to look that up, so uh, bear with me and let me double check that, I'll be right back. Okay, no there is not, at least there is not one published by the uh, maker of the kit, unlike for the Game Boy Advance. but. I'm betting the exact same thing exists if you can uh, pump in extra current to this thing I'm sure it'll result in increased brightness at the cost of battery life but it is what it is okay let us move on So I will be wiring up the brightness button, uh, especially since I've already basically done half the work here. Uh, you will need a wire and you will need to solder it to the test point that is labeled Q12B. Can't really see it because my wire's over it, but it is right there. This one, there's these two right next to each other, it's the top one. This test point is just for this button here. So. If for some reason your test point is gone, you can wire it to one of these button corners. It'll work the same. But mind you, if your test point is gone, it's probably because you weren't soldering correctly in the first place. So I'd recommend doing some solder practice first before trying to go for one of the button corners. But it will work. And specifically, let me get my multimeter here. It's on continuity mode. If I put this on that test point and then on button two, button four, those are the pads you'd want to solder to. The top ones go to ground, which I thought that was a ground. I guess that's not a ground. Where's a ground? That's a ground. See, top ones are ground. Bottom ones are the button. Easy peasy. If you rip the pad on this thing, actually let's check that right now while I have it open. Oh, 
Oh, they changed it. Those sneaky devils. If you rip the pad on this thing, again, I highly recommend just practicing soldering first. It is not that. Okay, I thought it was that. I will need to, uh, I'll need to investigate further. I will be back in a moment. All right, there we go, found it. So let me zoom this in, oh, wait a bit. Oh, let me move my light because I can't articulate my camera arm with it in the way. All right. So I have the red probe off screen onto the uh, solder pad for brightness control and it connects to this bottom pin on D1 right here. That is where you would want to solder if for some reason you rip the um, rip the pad on the ribbon cable. But again, if you rip the pad on the ribbon cable, I highly recommend getting more solder practice in before continuing to try and attempt that solder. Um, I mean, yeah, you'll need a longer wire to go from this pad to the PCB, but it's better than nothing. It is also the bottom pin on this connector here and this touch sensor appears to connect to this pad on um, to this IC right here and to this bottom unpopulated capacitor pad C9 but I can't verify that without uh, scratching into this thing or cutting it off so don't quote me on that but I think it's the best place to start anyway let us carry on and finally do an install here. All right. So we're going to need a baggie to store this in. Not this. This. Um, because once I get the lens off here, the touch, or the, not the touch, the front light panel will be exposed. And if you touch that with your bare fingers, you will ruin it. I would like to save it for a future project. So I am going to put the assembly inside of a baggie. Uh, for peeling off, I generally like to start at the bottom. These plastic lenses will peel. You just gotta go slowly and you can literally peel it up. Heat will help, but it's not required. Don't use a tool, you will scratch the screen and the lens, or, or the lens, or both. And there we go. Again, do not touch that. Bad touch, no touch. That's what the bag is for. Now you can touch it all you want. All right, this is what we wanted, as you can see. Basically none of the adhesive stuck around, and what did stick around I need to remove. And we will need... I will need to uh, get some adhesive to stick this down. I'm just going to use a little bit because I'm probably going to remove this and replace it with a custom lens. But ideally, you'd want to do the whole thing. I always try and save the double-sided tape that comes with, um, like that comes in the center of the lens so that I could do stuff like this with it. I'm just looking for a piece that I've already started cutting up, but I don't think I'm going to find one. So I'm just going to use this one. Yeah. 
and you'd want to do thin strips along the entire periphery of the screen, or of the lens. But I am just going to do this goes down like that. I'm just going to do a little bit along the top and the bottom. Like I said, I think I will be removing this at some point, so I want to hold it down, but I want to be able to remove it as well. And this is a stock size lens. This isn't this isn't custom or anything like that. The other IPS kits use custom size lenses. Just like that. All right, before we carry on, uh, I just had a really good idea for getting this lined up properly. So I am going to plug this in. And locate my easy flash, which I just had on my desk. One moment. All right, I found it. It is on mode B. I would like it on mode A. And we'll need a battery. I would like the 240p test suite with the grid so that I can get this lined up properly. And as you can see, the LCD is just slightly too big for the cutout, but I think, I think it's fine. I didn't stick that down very good. Peel that up. Ah, oh, no. I just made a critical error. especially frustrating because I just peeled the adhesive up. Alright, it's going to have to be good enough. There we go. And that's it. Again, I'd recommend doing the whole periphery, but I didn't do that for a specific reason. And that is because I want a custom lens. And I just haven't ordered one yet. That's it.
once again. I'm going to stick that down with one screw in so the buttons don't get everywhere. And then this goes in here. It is located by the lens. You shouldn't have to do much else. This folds a boot like that. The touch sensor, I imagine, is going to get smashed somewhere, but I don't really know what I'm supposed to do with it. And I did not trim this yet, I just want to do a test fit. They say it needs to be trimmed, but... I don't know. Seems like it's clear and fine to me. Perhaps that is only with the laminated ones. Let me get a clear shell and we'll compare. All right, I got a clear yellow, but I think it'll be fine. Set this poor bear LCD aside. And yeah, I can see how this is just barely touching the LCD. On this side it's fine, but this side, yeah, I can see how it is, how it could cause issues. Yeah, you can see how this is kind of bowed up, the ribbon. Though I wonder if that's just because the, the board is now crooked. Yeah, but I can't really manipulate it. Ah, okay, I can see that crease in there now. Yep, so we definitely want trim. Let's trim. Even this one is creased, so yeah. Could be fine, I'd recommend trimming. They do sell uh, IPS ready shells that you don't need to trim. That should work with this, we want to trim this side. Let me pull up the instructions. Okay, yeah. It's this side. We don't have to cut it out quite like the IPS screens. Uh, we just need to trim that flush. I don't really know how to get this in there. This will do it like that. Oh, well, that works fine. Small chunks. Don't want to break the flush cutters. Boom. And that should be it. I'm just going to even my cuts out now. All right. So, yeah, it is kind of a disappointment that it's not, um, like, no trim, just drop in or anything like that. But it is what it is. Still pretty easy install, all things considered. I'm going to use some painter's tape to hold the board in place.
Oh, that, that went on much smoother. That was a lot better. I'm feeling good about that. Where's my other screwdriver? Oh, I found it. I probably should have fed that through first. Oh well. Is it in now? Cover is on. And again, that goes to Q12B. I am going to leave this wire soldered here because why the hell not? Um, but I'd recommend soldering it to the motherboard first. That seems like the easiest solution rather than trying to solder it to that while it's hanging out the, uh, hanging out the shell because you still have to fit it through that slit, which means you have to feed it through first, then solder it, regardless of which order you do motherboard or ribbon first. I will, however, tin this first. I guess I'll try to. Probably not going to get very far. Despite what it looked like, I was not soldering on top of the shell. I had this flipped up and there was a small gap between the shell and the ribbon because soldering iron plus plastic is going to give you a bad time. Let me get that seated in there. soldered on. Always hated this part. Just having to prop this thing up. But that's it. Easy peasy. Don't forget your square nut. I'm going to forget mine because I don't have one for this show. And I'm going to keep whining about it until I remember to do something about it. Which 
which is not going to be today. Ta -da. Kill the lights. Oh, there's a scratch on the lens. It's unfortunate. But there was something on the screen. I mean, I suppose a scratch on the lens is better than something on the screen, but you know what I mean. Looks great so far. I don't see any weirdness with uh, dropped frames or tearing or anything like that, but let's just do a quick double check. to do this test because it works the same on every Game Boy. You know the spiel by now. Uh, it should be perfectly steady. There shouldn't be any uh, stuttering or uh, diagonal lines or anything except for when the S in the word scrolling goes across the left of the screen. That's when it issues a LCD reset command and uh, well, it is going to drop a frame at that point, but so do OEM screens, and this handles that perfectly. I'm happy with that. Oh, that's awkward. I think that was the Game Boy, though. It power cycled it slightly too quickly. Let's try Zelda. Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX. And we're checking two things here. First thing is we're looking at this guy's chain. Uh, the original Game Boy, and for that matter, Game Boy Advance, uh, doesn't really have a way to do transparency effects. So devs worked around that by toggling sprites on and off 60 times a second. And because of the kind of shitty pixel response of the original screens, that resulted in transparency. Um, some of the other backlight kits show quite significant flickering. This one is actually reproducing that effect very admirably. Uh, I mean, you can still see a little bit of flickering, but it is, for the most part, transparent. Uh, the other thing we're going to check, I'm going to walk back and forth between these two frames, and we're looking at this line of green pixels right next to this fence area. When this transitions, because that's moving so quickly, on some of the other kits, there is usually uh, some artifacts you can see in the grass, uh, just due to the pixels not flipping over fast enough. But this kit, again, is looking pretty good. Um, there is one more thing that I have not seen in a very long time, um, and I'm not seeing it here either, but I'll give it a mention. Sometimes when transitioning screen to screen, you can see this guy's chain, you can see it just like flickering in place even though the screen is moving until it completes the transition and then it disappears finally. It's kind of weird, don't know what's up with that, not seeing it here. This, test pass this kit is passing with flying colors, I think. Let us do one more test with the EverDrive. And I'm going to boot back into the test suite here. And looking at the grid, yeah, I didn't get it perfectly lined up, but 
you know, it's good enough, I think. Um, I really don't think you're going to miss that, that last column of pixels. Uh, you're either going to cut it off on the left or the right. I just so happen to get it cut off on the right. It is what it is. I don't think you're going to miss that. Any game that puts critical elements on that very last row is probably not a game worth playing anyway. Um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know what else to say about that. I, I haven't seen any official game ever do that. Mirity looks good. What we're looking at with this is we want to make sure that circle and all the other circles are circular. I can see that being kind of annoying. You can always tape your lens down if you want. It's the whole screen moving. Uh, what else did we want to test? I can never remember which one. I don't think this is going to tell us anything we haven't already looked at, but as you can see, no tearing, no dropping. Everything is nice and smooth as it ought to be. Same thing here. Again, nice and smooth. Hopefully the video the camera is picking that up. All right, one final test. I'm gonna put Pokemon Emerald back in. And for comparison here, I have a stock AGS 101. Loading mostly the same game. you can get a feel for the colors. Uh, every single console is going to be a little bit different. There is no golden standard, but I think the AGS 101 is the closest we can get to a golden standard as far as backlit Game Boys go. So any screen, you know, if you're looking at colors to see how accurate they should be, this is what I believe they should be compared to. As you can see, things are not quite the same. It's not bad, but it is different. Um, now, you guys have a much, much better angle than I do because the viewing angles on the AGS 101, quite frankly, suck in comparison. But, you know, it does work. This, of course, does get brighter, if that is your jam. But this gets dimmer, if that is your jam. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Take, take it how you will. If I had to pick one as far as colors go, I'm liking the color reproduction of the AGS 101. A little bit better, but I'm liking everything else about the other screen better. Uh, first off, it is slightly bigger, and it doesn't seem like it would make a difference, but it really does. It is also closer to the lens, being right up against the lens, as opposed to the AGS 101, which is spaced slightly behind it. It does look better, uh, and of course, the laminated screens that these newer kits are going to be shipping with would be a step beyond that, even. Uh, and because it is coming from Cloud Game Store, I trust that they will actually have some nice lenses on there. They are one of the only sellers that has, uh, you know, 8 plus um, reproduction lenses, I think. And of course, yeah, you don't have that pixel grid, but um, that screen door that people get so nostalgic about just ruins the contrast of the LCD and it looks so much better without it. But there you go. 
for comparison, because I didn't do this in my video with the funny playing stream, I might as well do it here. But I don't have one handy. That's okay. I have one of these handy. Which is just to boot the same thing. I have to forgive the dirty lens though. just realized I did something really dumb when putting this one together. That's the B button. That's the A button. <laughs> Whoops. Alright. That explains why they didn't feel right. <laughs> nice and flat. And again, you can see the colors. Um, this one is much more saturated, and I think that that looks the best. Yeah, it's not, it's not an AGS 101, but I don't think that's a bad thing. You can see the Cloud Game Store kit has much cooler color temperature to it. It looks just kind of blue. This is much warmer. It looks more, um, it's definitely more saturated. I don't necessarily think it's oversaturated, but I think it, I guess it has a little bit of an orange look to it. My camera tends to make things look a little bit more blue than they are. So it's making this look much worse than it does in person. And it's making this look much more muted than it does in person. But either way, I have them both in hand. I'm looking at both of them. I still like how this one looks the best. But either way, they're still both fine. I don't think you can go wrong with either kit. Um, I think that's all I have to say for this video. I will go ahead and get this uploaded, do a few more tests, and update my documents, including my um, wiki with all the backlight kits, with some notes after testing this a little bit more. But so far, it looks pretty much like the uh, sample they sent me, just on a different PCB. It's the exact same screen, exact same install, everything. Um, do I have a working touch sensor? I think I do. I just gotta find it. Yeah. My touch sensor does work. You just gotta, gotta put a... It's right behind the Nintendo logo. Oh, and that's interesting. There's a little bit of light bleed over here. You can see that little cutout where my tape is. I'd have to kill the lights to see it better, but I don't know. Interesting. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you have a fantastic evening, and thanks again to Retro Game Repair Shop for sending me this, sending this my way to check out and play with. It's been fantastic. There's a link in the description. Catch you next time.